Let's convene tonight's summit. And today, joining us, Professor Avi Bell, a professor of law at the Faculty of Law at the Barland University and member of the Kohelet Forum. Uri Zaki, founder of the Front for the Protection of Democracy and uh, Israeli ambassador uh, to uh, France, formerly Ambassador Daniel Shek. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, so very much uh, for uh, joining us tonight as our main uh, topic, uh, the judicial D-Day in uh, historic first. All Supreme Court justices will convene to discuss themselves, their role in Israel's democratic functioning, but uh, with uh, some top members of the ruling coalition already saying, well, you know what, uh, we will not follow this or that. Uh, ruling of the high uh, court is the clock ticking backwards on a constitutional crisis here in Israel. Let's take a closer look and pick up the conversation from there. <laughs> Judgment Day for the Reasonableness Bill. On Tuesday, the High Court will commence its hearing whether to accept the government's proposal of tightening the reasonableness standard for judicial decisions. If passed, this will limit the High Court's ability to overrule the government on policies they view as unreasonable. However, it is likely that the controversy won't end when the judgment is passed. Speaker of the Knesset, Amir Khanna, suggested that the government will not necessarily abide by the court's rulings if it decides to annul the legislation, a comment reposted by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on social media. However, several senior coalition members, including Defence Minister Yoav Gallant, have said that the ruling will be respected. But in this situation, should the High Court be the ones to decide their own fate, or should the democratically elected government be allowed to push ahead with their reforms? What are the true intentions of the Israeli government? Is there still time to come up with a compromise on the reasonableness bill, or has that ship sailed? Should the government overrule the High Court on the reasonableness bill? So let's uh, get to it. Should the government overrule the High Court on the reasonableness uh, uh, bill? As always, gentlemen, we begin with a quick fire round, 30 seconds each to lay out your initial stance on the matter, and we pick up the conversation now from there. So, uh, Professor Bell, please take the lead. Sure. Um, I think the question is premature. The question is not, uh, we don't yet know what the court is going to do. Mm -hmm. Um, the question is really whether the court is going to obey the law or whether it's going to seize for itself powers that it does not have under law and purport to cancel or delay suspend the law. Now, if the court decides to suspend the law or cancel it, it the government is in catch-22. It can either obey the law or can obey the whims of the court. Either way, we're in a crisis. All right, Mr. Zaki, your thoughts? We're in the midst, we're in the midst of a, um, a regime... I, I, I didn't speak for 30 seconds. Uh, we're in the midst of a, uh, uh, an attempt to uh, overhaul the Israeli democracy, an attempt that the Kohelet uh, Forum is part of. And uh, the court has to act, because in Israel, the only checks and balances to the government uh, is the Israeli Supreme uh, Court. And the court has to intervene, has to stop to defend Israel's democracy. All right, last but not least, Ambassador Shek, your take? Well, uh, you know, it's called the rule of law. So everybody has to abide by uh, the ruling of a court, and the government is no exception. And the fact that uh, leading members of this government are openly saying that they won't respect the decision of a court is the worst possible message to any citizen in Israel. If they don't think that the law and the courts uh, should be obeyed, why should I? And uh, on that note, let's feel free uh, to interact and engage in a conversation. Uh, Professor Bell, uh, Ambassador Shek is uh, asking, why should I? I think that he's absolutely right that the rule of law is essential. What his pro the problem here is that he's confusing the rule of law for whims of individuals. The whim of an individual whims is, is not your the law. choice whether of words. It's sit, certainly not mine, whether, sir. Whether that individual whims is the your Supreme choice Court of words. It's that, not mine. So whether that I think the, I think the judges correct. are doing their job. It, it, no, no, sir, sir. I get to complete my answer. Thank you very much. Please don't interrupt me. No, um, yeah. The law, the law in a democratic society is made by the representatives of the people, not by the whims of a court. This is a 
This is not the only country where we've faced this problem. Uh, uh, President Abraham Lincoln faced the same problem in the 19th century in the United States. He was firm enough to understand that ultimately these questions have to be decided by the representatives of the people. And if the court oversteps, we have to figure out a way to res continue respecting the rule of law while respecting also the judgments of the court. That does not mean submitting to the whims of a court that is making up for itself powers that it does not have according to law and doing what it can to expand its powers beyond any limit. There's no limit on a court which operates without a constitution. Yeah, Ambassador Sheck, please, yeah. No, I mean, I love the comparison with the United States. You're comparing the uncomparable. I mean, in Israel, the only, only counterpower, the only recourse for anyone is the high court. We don't have a constitution, we don't have a bicameral parliament, we don't have states, we don't have a directly elected president. We don't have so many checks and balances that make the beautiful democracy of the United States. In Israel, there is only the high court. There is no separation of power between the executive and the parliament. They are one power and you cannot uh, tie the hands of the only recourse that uh, the simple citizen can have. And as Uri Zaki uh, insinuated and probably will say, this is not about changing the law. This is about changing the, the, the mode of government in this country, changing it from a liberal democracy like it was born into an illiberal democracy, a sham of a democracy. Well, Urizaki, is there any scenario that, that post Tuesday uh, we will uh, head on, on a route of reconciliation of sorts, or is it only going to escalate? Ali, just, just a, a quick response to Please. Professor Bell. Uh, from, from his accent and, and from his knowledge in American history, it seems that he uh, uh, has some, some degree of an American background. Uh, he probably knows that the U.S. Supreme Court, in a whim, decided after the Constitution was accepted that the court the, is the, the one who interprets uh, the Constitution. It was a whim, a whim. Listen, the Coherent Forum, which uh, uh, heavily financed by uh, extreme rightist American money, is trying to uh, uh, make a, a, a coup in Israel, a, a, a change of regime. We will not let uh, the Kohelet Forum do that. The people has uh, stepped out, uh, stepped up to stop your attempts to uh, import what is not uh, succeeding in the United States here in Israel. We will stop you. Now, uh, about reconciliation, listen, this whole uh, uh, overhaul, this whole uh, attempt in a, a regime well, change is, is, is totally a uh, unilateral step of the Israeli government. It wasn't even mentioned in the Israeli elections. It's, it, and, and by no surprise, the coalition lost all its uh, majority today in a, a public opinion poll published by uh, uh, the leading channel in Israel, Channel uh, 12. Yeah. So uh, it, it's not about reconciliation. What the, if Netanyahu wants to uh, 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 maintain some of his uh, um, reputation as a world leader, as, a, uh, as an Israeli leader, he has to literally pull away from this but, but, uh, but trouble will it that the Kohelet Forum and, and Minister Levine put him in. But, but will it satisfy, quote unquote, the, the protest movement, the opposition, a, 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 any outline at this point? Listen, we're not happy about the nature of this coalition. It's a, an extreme uh, coalition that every so day brings. Yeah. Uh, a crazy new new thing, but if mm -hmm. Netanyahu would uh, come to his senses unilaterally, stop this crazy uh, attempt that 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 is is wrecking the Israeli economy, mm -hmm. is tearing apart the Israeli military, is is really uh, uh, doing so much harm to Israel. Uh, yes, I think people respect that, and he will bring uh, a calmer situation uh, to the state of Israel.
So, Professor Bell, it is a compromise of sort, a unilateral one, uh, um, potentially presented by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Will that be considered still a, a political zero-sum game, or is there a way for both the coalition and the opposition to score a win here, politically speaking? I, I think the question is much deeper than the question mm -hmm. of political wins. Um, ultimately, the, we, are, we are in a constitutional crisis. Um, Israel is the only country in the world without a written constitution where the court has seized for itself the power to overturn laws. It's completely incompatible with uh, uh, democracy. And I have to say, if uh, since I was uh, challenged on it, I will quote from uh, Lincoln, the candid citizen must confess that if the policy of the government upon vital questions affecting the whole people is to be irrevocable, be fixed by decisions of the Supreme backwards. Court. Go to Washington's time, the not people, to Lincoln. It, the people will have ceased to be where their the, own rulers. Show me where in the Constitution it says, in the American Constitution, that the Supreme Court number can overrule legislation due to the Constitution. In the show me. I will be able to say, I will, I will, will you not silence me. You cannot silence me. I'm not silencing now, you. The, I'm oh, challenging you. Please, Professor Bell, yes, please. Um, the, ultimately, the question is um, whether uh, we're going to be able to, to uh, get past judicial overreach. Three years ago, we reached the same place. The court decided, in contrary to the law, to fire the Speaker of the Knesset. Uh, uh, Benny Gantz and Benny, Benny Minson now found the courage to, to reach a political solution where they circumvented the, the judicial overreach. It's not too late for someone from the opposition to decide to, to join Netanyahu in reaching a compromise. Nobody Unfortunately, Nobody will join who? Netanyahu? Netanyahu, Netanyahu, Netanyahu Nobody uh, will join the Kohelet attempt. Denied uh, offering it. Netanyahu denied Nobody offering a compromise. Count on that. But, but, but if he would. You do not get to silence me. Uh, no, but you're saying this is how this, uh, this program works. <laughs> People argue openly. Right, right, right. It, it's probably technical difficulties. We do encourage, of course, a discussion here. Professor Bell, yes, please conclude your, your argument. Yeah. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, what we've seen so far is that the president twice has come out with uh, uh, ratifications of ju judicial overreach and called it compromises, taken all the wind out of a compromise sale. But the way remains open if the opposition is willing to jump in and demonstrate responsibility. So now the president is not good either. Either it's a full non-democracy or it's the highway. Listen, Kohelet will not prevail here. You are detached from these to the mainstream Israeli. No, but Orizaki, there is a ruling opinion. government, even if the Kihalit Forum is influential. It's not succeeding in the United States, and it will not succeed here either. All right. Uh, Ambassador Shek, before we need to take a break, um, wrap it up for us. No, I mean, uh, even uh, the Israeli right is not happy with what's happening uh, with these uh, uh, extreme proposals in the uh, judicial overall. 80% of Israeli public opinion is against it. So it cannot be forced down our throats. It simply cannot be done. So uh, there has to be a reset, and then maybe we can start talking again. Well, it sounds as if uh, time for some sort of a reset is uh, fast approaching, and we're taking a very quick break, a few minutes, and we continue our uh, discussion uh, here in the uh, studio with our panelists. Is it too late for a political compromise, or is there still a chance? A few minutes, then we're back with the summit. Welcome back to the summit. Still with us, Ambassador Daniel Lashek, Mr. Rizaki, Professor Avi Bell. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for staying with us. We're also staying on topic, of course. But before we get back to our conversation, uh, we've been starting to, to discuss a potential compromise at the 11th hour now. Uh, and Israeli President Isaac Herzog not giving up uh, quite uh, yet. But question being, is there anything to be done at this point in time? Uh, this is what Herzog said only short days ago. Let's take a listen. There are moments in such a crisis when leadership must seize the rare opportunity in order to reach out and come to an agreement. This is such a moment. We are before the Jewish New Year, 
Before the high holidays, for nine months, we have been in a deep crisis that dramatically affects our lives, significantly affects our security, affects our economy, affects our society, affects our human behavior. Enough already. All right, gentlemen, another quick fire round, 30 seconds each, and we take it up from there. Is it too late um, for a political compromise? Ambassador Daniel Sheck, please take the lead. You're asking a former diplomat if it's too late for a compromise? That's <laughs> no, not, uh, that's yeah. a conundrum. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously, uh, the trouble is that all we have seen until now are balloons that are being floated mm -hmm. by Prime Minister Netanyahu and immediately withdrawn, immediately withdrawn. So there has been no serious proposal on the table. When there is a serious proposal on the table, I would never recommend to just say no before discussing it. Uh, Orizaki, your thoughts? I'm always for dialogue, I'm always for uh, uh, having conversations, but as I said before, this whole uh, attempt on the Israeli democracy is unilateral. It started unilaterally, it failed unilaterally, and it has to go off the table unilaterally. It's not about coalition or opposition. It's, by the way, the opposition don't, don't, doesn't own anything. It's a question of the Israeli people against the Israeli government. The Israeli government has to pull that. Professor Avi Bell, last but not least. Yeah, the, the, the most important thing is first to identify what the issue is. The mm. issue here is there's the, uh, an ongoing uh, threat from judicial overreach to Israeli democracy. It's been recognized for 25 years from people from all parties. What's happened in the last, uh, uh, since the election, since November, is that people have pulled back from that from the other side and said, and just, and for political reasons, they're attacking this government, refusing to join in efforts to fix this problem. We have to work together to fix the problem. Okay, and on that note, let's uh, do no feel free to uh, interact, considering uh, the technical uh, uh, challenges uh, uh, here. Uh, uh, Urizaki, Lapidus warning, it, it, it's too good to be true. Uh, should, would the opposition, you're saying it is not up to the opposition, but uh, is the opposition seeking compromise? Again, compromise, compromise, compromising, sorry, what? This is, there's no problem with the Israeli judicial, I mean, the, the, any institution has problems. The Israeli judicial branch is not even one of the 10 problems of the state of Israel. We have many, by the way, the political uh, 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 system and, and the government, uh, the, the executive and the legislative branches uh, are, have much less uh, support of the Israeli public than the judicial uh, branch. There's no such problem. It's a problem that was invented in the minds of, of, of people from the Kohelet Forum uh, with some of the, the extreme settlers who didn't like the, the, the fact that the Supreme Court, uh, I don't know, didn't stop the withdrawal from Gaza or something like that. And in the, the mind, uh, the distorted mind, I should say, of uh, Mr. Levine, the uh, Minister of Justice. Even Netanyahu was not part of this until he became uh, 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 facing a, a, a criminal uh, trial of his own. So there's no problem. The problem was invented by the government, by the Netanyahu's coalition, by Netanyahu's coalition, by Mr. Levine. They can, it's not about opposition coalition. And again, as as, as uh, Ambassador Sheikh said, there's 80 percent. 80 percent. What do you have in Israel that has 80 percent uh, 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 common? Uh, denominator. 80% of the Israeli public is against this so-called reform. What more should happen for them to to uh, abandon it? Again, the the problem is that Netanyahu is is uh, uh, <coughs> has been indicted and facing a trial, and that's why he's he's not pulling oh. away so quickly as he should have. Professor Bell, please chime in. Yeah. Yeah, um, the, one of the first things that Ehud Barak's uh, newly elected government in 1999 did was that it called on the court to stop interfering in political affairs, to step back. Um, when uh, Daniel Friedman was appointed uh, a justice minister in the 2006 Kadima government, a left-wing government, um, he launched a, a, a full-scale pro reform proposal to describe this as if this only happened overnight, as if this is a new initiative that was created by, by me or by 
by a, a, a civil society organization that supports democracy and uh, liberal values um, because uh, uh, he needs an, a, a demon. Um, that's that's just simply nonsense. It's a lie, just as much as this lie that 80% opposes well, form. That's simply not a reflection of reality. Even your biggest reality reality is you very convincing. Oh, excuse me, sir. You cannot silence me. No, Stop I, I'm not silencing you. I'm interfering. You can do the same. <laughs> I'm not interested in trying to silence you. You're the bully I'm not bully silencing here. you. I'm not but we are interested in, in a discussion, Professor Wright. Don't, be, don't victimize right, yourself. That was victim trying to is, is ridiculous. All right. You, you gentlemen. You, you can't just take the, the advantage of outnumbering me two to one. You also have to try to, to silence me as I speak. What's the matter with you? Are you so afraid of reasoned argument? Uh, it's a smaller, it's a smaller ratio than the public against this uh, yes. war. Yes. All right. It's, it's only two thirds, and, and the public is eighty percent against. Professor, exactly. Bell, please conclude so we can hear Ambassador no. Sheck as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the the trouble is, what, what? Uh, do you want to finish your sentence? I would Ellie? like to finish my sentence, yes. Ellie, if who is speaking if that's okay now? With you, yeah, perhaps uh, your diplomatic skills have taught you how not no, to okay, interrupt gentlemen, as well. Gentlemen, gentlemen, okay. gentlemen, please, please. Yes, uh, uh, Ambassador Sheck, please. Thank you. Um, this is not about the judicial overall. Deep down, it's about one simple thing. The government wants more power. It wants to take over the judiciary. It's the only power that the government doesn't control here. In the so-called separation of powers, which is the backbone of a democracy, in Israel, for all sorts of reasons, the executive and the legislative are one power. Now they want to take over the third one, and that will give them complete freedom to exercise the rule, the total totalitarian rule of the majority. And anyone who is not part of the majority has zero recourse. And please don't come and uh, quote Abraham Lincoln or other presidents or uh, France or other countries. They are not comparable. Our democracy is much more fragile for all sorts of historical reasons because we don't have a constitution and we don't have a very developed uh, system of checks and balances. If we want to create a constitution, mm -hmm. that is a different story. But for that, you need a very broad majority and not an accidental majority of 61 or 62 or 64 people who just raise their hands and change the regime in Israel. That's not going to work. And 80% of Israelis are telling you that every yeah. week oh. for 35 weeks now. Professor Bell, please, we're nearing the end of our discussion. You know, one of the fascinating things here is the, the, the total disregard for truth and the facts. So the facts are this, um, the powers that the court is, is declaring for itself now, they did not exist in Israel forever. There was in Israel a, a UK Westminster parliamentary system until the 1990s, until the court decided unilaterally by a majority of eight out of 15 judges to change, to revolutionize the system. Now, all, the, all that we want to argue about, the whole thing, you know, you don't like my particular reform proposal, let's make it simple. Let's just run back the clock to where we were before Barack. In the 80s and 90s, the government was not totalitarian, was not absolute. It's not Barack, but it was the legislation by the Knesset. have yeah. absolute powers. It was, and why you're, is it you're, 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 you're restrain, you're the facts. restrain yourself? Why every single time do you have to try to silence me? Well, your okay. bullying because nature is no, not no helping the conversation. Well, okay. I'm, you're I'm a bully. Bully. I don't want to you're bully. All right, you're gentlemen, a bully. as you're always, we encourage interaction, a conversation here. But uh, at this point in time, we need uh, to thank you and wrap it up a lot. Hey, I see you liked it. Want more? Just hit the subscribe button right here. Go on. I know you want to.